Before we get started, before I introduce uh, Glenn, I'd just like to thank you all very much for coming. Really appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. These things aren't easy to put on. Um, I remember my I remember my dad taking me to my first clean when I was 18 in Birmingham to see a guy called Rob Morgenstein. And there was hundreds of people there because back then, it's only the big boys that were doing clinic tours, and there were only half a dozen or so of them uh, from the DCI days. But now, because of the internet and because everyone is so much more accessible and uh, you know, times have changed, obviously there's a lot more guys doing it. So the difficulty that we have, when, when we're, everybody's got something to say, but the difficulty that we have is, is putting something on and getting the support because we're not AAA listed yet. So thanks for your support, really appreciate it. Um, thanks to Colin and everyone at Cause for continued support, we really appreciate it. Everyone from MLC has come along. Um, again, appreciate everything you do. You guys, yeah, we're, really, we're running around doing the sound. You see, yeah, we're going to have a little bit of punch and juice for them. <laughs> um, so, let me introduce Glenn. second now, every drummer in the audience goes, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And within a heartbeat now, it's on YouTube and everybody, you know, everybody's like, oh, <laughs> there it is. So you get famous for the wrong reasons, although, you know, there we are, you're still here. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the drums um, and then try and answer a question that I get asked a lot. Which is who am I and what am I doing? Here? <coughs> Wait, why did you change your black and white shoes to red and grey shoes? Do you know what? There was a bit of an explosion. <laughs> no, anyway. Um, Natal, a couple of people have asked tonight, you know, what's the story behind Natal? Because they look a little bit like BW <coughs> and other things. Um, <coughs> any guitarists in the audience? Guitarists? <laughs> yeah, anyone else? Yeah, there's a couple knocking around. I'm David. <laughs> Um, so we all know Marshall Amps, right? We all know Jim Marshall who passed away last year, Marshall Amps. Well, Natal is owned and uh, manufactured by Marshall. And the story is, when, when Jim had his, uh, his shop on Denmark in the 60s, um, apart from making amps for the likes of Jimi Hendrix, he would sell Natal Congress to uh, John Bonham and other, other drummers. 
Um, and then there's a, a real, really good friend of mine, uh, Craig Glover, who <coughs> became head of Marshall Worldwide uh, Sales. Um, and he was given the, the remit by Jim to come up with a, a, a drum brand because Jim himself's a drummer. And not many, not many people knew that Jim was a drummer. So after a lot of ferreting around, they, they, they realised that Natal as a trademark of someone was available, so they bought that. And within 18 months, they designed and manufactured these amazing drum sets um, that are now taking the world by storm. Um, <coughs> Not just because of their parent company, but just because of the, they're just amazing instruments. Um, as I'll, hopefully you'll, you'll hear. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about the electronics with the acoustics, um, which is an interesting jump from Glenn's <coughs> clinic actually doing the rockabilly thing to music where it is in 2013. There is a requirement now um, for drummers to be able to play to a metronome, click track. You've got to lock in, you've got to be tight, often in a life situation, not just a studio situation. But a lot of guys and girls are now experimenting with mixing in uh, electronics with their players, which I'm going to try and do now. And all those putting it on YouTube will be able to go, oh yeah, I love that one. But anyway, um, but to be able to do that, I need to know a little bit about musical form, because the sequences I'll be triggering, they're, they're, they're not just random hits, there's form within it. Um, all the proper musicians out there will understand what I'm babbling on about. But the, um, I would say this to all drummers learning, it doesn't matter how into drums you are as an art form, whether you're a beginner or a pro, I think I would advise everyone now, um, if you're learning the drums, try learning the piano as well, or something like that, because your, your drum fills will be much more informed, your theory will be sharp. <laughs>
it's not even, sometimes it's not even acknowledged unless it's wildly off. Playing along with uh, samples or to a track forces you to just tighten up. Um, and you know, it, I think it is true what they say, if you've got, if, if there's a good drummer in the band, it's a good band. I think we'll all agree with that, won't be silent. <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said for that. You? you know, it doesn't matter if it's rock billy or blast beats. If, you're a good, if there's a good drummer driving it, everyone else can relax. <laughs> uh, the, the, non, the non musos out there, you shouldn't hear a good drummer, you should just feel a good drummer. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people who can't play music at all notice when something hasn't gone right. You know, and notice when the drummer's fouled up because it's like, oh, yeah. That's not quite right, I don't know what happened there, can't identify it, because it, it's hypnotic, it's tribal, we just get into it, we just groove, we make people dance. So, here's a dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Samita. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, no, no, um, yeah, I'm going to play a, a corn track. Um, <laughs> I didn't think you were going to say that. No, I didn't want to say that. I got my <laughs> Yeah. And um, I'll get out of here then. So if I make a mistake, my name's Jim Farrow. Are these in there as well? I hope it's an old one. Yeah, please. Uh, Narcissistic. Nars that's the middle. Last night, 
was that um, yeah, a little while back, as Paul explained a few years ago, only the big guys were doing what we're doing, which is like getting up early in clinics, having to go see Dennis Chambers, of course, and what more is done, and only the top guys were doing it. And now you've got these guys like me doing it, Paul and Glenn and all sorts of our friends are doing it. We've got out there playing to people. And we're making it happen. We're making it happen because we work very, very hard. It's very, very... Uh, very, very simple. We sit down at offices, I'm sure Paul understands exactly what I'm saying, sit down at a computer and work to make this sort of tour happen. I hold clinics and in, in Marseille, I hold clinics and visiting artists, it's a big, big job. Um, going down there, touring is a big, big job, it's very, very difficult, uh, living out of a suitcase, that sort of thing, it's, it's, a, it's a tough job. But I really love doing it and that is the reason why we do it. Before. We'd be doing something else that earns so much more money. Am I right? Don't get any money to do it. I'll talk to you afterwards. Bye, Michael. Um, and what, what I saw yesterday, um, first time in Glenn played, and I learned so much, and this is what's good to me. Everybody thinks, um, what guys like me go out, um, guys like myself go out and pull, there's so much to learn from every drummer. You know, they don't have to be the biggest guys in the world and notorious, they don't have to be that type of guy. Um, it can be just guys like myself, I'm just a regular guy, but I actually choose to go out and do what I'm doing as I sit there at home and work out these tours and we go out and we play because I like to share what I've learned and I like to, I just like to get out there and play like we all do. Okay? And I saw Glenn uh, play last night and what he said, I, I learned so much just in about half an hour. He played up in Halifax. And Halifax is really, really, really close to where I live, or where I lived about 12 years ago, or where I come from, which is Leeds. And strangely enough, in Halifax, the guy yesterday, um, he, he said I was the guy with the weirdest accent he's ever heard. <laughs> I said that as well. You said that? Yeah. When? Last year. Well, it's probably developed since then. Yeah. Is that true? Have I got a weird accent? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Is it time? Well, what am I sort of, you know, I'm going to record myself. Well, so, you know, because I live in France, I live in Marseille, sole reason being um, that it's very nice weather. So, <laughs> so I was going to have this accent, which is not a Yorkshire accent, but originally I am from Leeds. So they all found it a bit weird last night. Somebody even twi tweeted it. It's morning. <laughs> it's a great plane. Love the French, uh, love, love the Marseille stroke uh, Yorkshire accent. Rob Hirons is a disgrace in Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So that's not a good accent. So I apologise for that. I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that. Like, I heard that. So I heard Glenn last night play great. That was amazing. I learned so much. Paul, as I said to you before, I wanted to say this um, uh, again. I, I said it while I was introducing him. That, um, in my eyes, the guy is so underestimated. Why? Because he's not known for doing what he does. He's known for running a school like we all are. We all have to get the bills paid, and he sits there working. Um, Managing the school, and he doesn't do much playing, but he, the guy's a wealth of knowledge. He's studied for years with Jim Chapin, and you've seen his hands are amazing. Um, so I'm quite astonished by that. Um, so this is like people like this coming out. I know Jim, you, you do clinics, you come to my place in, uh, in Marseille. Uh, yeah. Same thing. Okay. Huh? Really had a great time. I said I'd talk to you about it. <laughs> we had a great time. Just because I bought, I bought your money.
study with Chapin. I didn't get that chance. And Paul said that Chapin, he knows this technique inside and out. So louds for coming from far away. It has to be prepared, it has to come from far away. You have to get there first before you make the scroll. Okay, all drumming, what we hear is the impact of the stick on the head, but in actual fact, most of the, um, most of the time in a drummer's life is spent in air, in the, in the air above the, in the movement above the drum. So this is very important. Okay, a soft note, I don't hit it softly, it just comes from less far away. So if I want to do a loud note followed by a soft note, back with a loud note, stop the stick from striking back up, from bouncing back up, and just let the second stroke happen. Simple, very easy to do once you master the technique. If I want to do a soft stroke followed by a loud stroke, the soft note starts from here while the hand rises up to do the second louder stroke. Okay. Manage, I call it motion management. You could never manage um, the motion of your stakes if you're trying to think loud, soft, loud, soft. You can't, it's preparation. So, this next song I hope will demonstrate a bit more of that. It's a very groove based song, a bit slower so you can see that. Any questions on that? Well, you are.
tightly surround the fires and making puppets of them. Um, the bass drum follows more or less the bass, uh, the bass guitar, and the snare drum is so high up stick or more conventional uh, basses. Okay, let me give that a try. Okay.
Yeah, it's a great community, you know, us drummers, we like doing this. We, we need more clinics, check out Nottingham Drummers Forum, you know, and sign up to the MLC uh, newsletters. But you're sick of hearing about the clinic. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, no, thanks a million for coming, thanks for your support, really appreciate it. Um, ne the next one, actually, for those of you in the know, we're, gonna, we're, we're having a, a day with Thomas Lang in May, if, if anyone fancies that. Um, just sign up, you know, come and say hi, come and have a look at the stuff. Um, thanks a lot, thanks for coming.